All right, this problem says that a toy rocket is launched upward with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second, so that's what we'll call V sub zero in our equation, from a platform 80 feet high. That's going to be our H sub zero. We want to write an equation that gives the height of the rocket as a function of time. Well, remember when we're dealing with feet, the equation is going to be H equals negative 16, that's a half of 32 feet per second squared, times the time squared plus our initial velocity times t plus our initial height. So if we substitute the information that's given to us in our problem, we'll have negative 16t squared plus 64 times t. And notice that's because our initial velocity is 64 plus our initial height of 80. So there is our function. We can find the height of the rocket at any time. In fact, at t equals 0, notice if you put t equals 0 into this equation, you're going to end up getting that the height is equal to 80. which makes sense given the information that we have at the beginning of the problem. Okay, we're going to go on and answer a few more questions about this rocket using the equation that we just found. And our first equation is, how many seconds until the maximum height is reached? Well, we know that we're going to have a maximum height because our A value is negative, and that means it's going to be a parabola that opens downward when we graph this function. To find the maximum height, or actually the first thing we're going to do is find out when it happens, we're going to find the t-coordinate of the vertex, the t-coordinate of the vertex. Well, that's going to be equal to, the horizontal coordinate will be equal to negative b divided by 2a. We substitute this value of b, we'll have negative 64 divided by 2 times, here's our value of A. And this gives us 2. So at 2 seconds, the rocket's going to be at its maximum height. The next question asks, what is that maximum height? Well, that's going to be found by simply putting the value that we just got for the time into the equation. So our height will be negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64 times 2 plus 80. That's going to be equal to negative 16 times 2 squared is negative 16 times 4, which is negative 64. This is 128. And here we have 80. When you add those together, you end up getting 144 feet. So at two seconds, let's put some units on here, the rocket will be at its maximum height of 144 feet. Now we can check that out on our calculator. We're going to go ahead and call up our graphing calculator and go to the equation editor and put in our equation, negative 16 p, we've got to use x here, squared, plus 64 t plus 80. And when we graph that on our standard window, it's hard to see that that's even a parabola. It looks like it's just two straight lines that are vertical maybe with a little bend, of, bend in them in the middle. But we know it's a parabola. And we also know from we found out about where the maximum height is and at the time that that occurs at, what some good values are to put in our window. So we're going to press the window button and change our scale. Uh, X is our time values and it doesn't make sense to have negative time values, so we'll start at zero. And remember it was at its maximum height at two seconds. So let's just go a little bit bigger than double that let's say five seconds 
And then for the y values, we know it, it's not going to have negative height. That's going to be below the ground. So again, we'll start at 0. And remember that its maximum height was 144. Well, we're not going to just make it 144. We're going to make it a little bit bigger than that. In fact, let's make it 200. These aren't perfect. This is not a perfect window. It's just a good window. You can play around with these values until you get a graph that looks like what you want it to look like. So I'm going to press the graph button. And there we have the graph. Now this is not the path of the rocket. It looks like we have a rocket that's uh, going out some distance. This is a height versus time graph. So this is height in feet, and this is time in seconds. So at a certain value of time, for example here at one second, the rocket is that far off the ground. And again, it's about that far off the ground if we go over to this amount of time. It's the same distance off the ground. Let's just check to see if the maximum really did occur at 2 seconds and was 144 feet. So we're going to press second and the calc button and go down and select number 4, maximum. Now it wants us to go right of that. We know it happened at about 2 seconds, so I'm going to go, I meant to say left, I'm going to go to a left bound of 1. And I'm going to go right bound of, let's say, 3. And I'm going to guess in the middle, let's say 2. And here it tells us that our maximum occurs at 2 seconds and the height is 144. Now the next problem is going to ask us to find the zero of our function, to find out when it hits the ground. So as long as we've got the graph up here, let's see if we can find that out. I notice on my graph that I'm way kind of at the edge here when it's hitting the ground. So I'm going to change my scale, make it a little bit easier to see where that zero occurs. So we're going to go back to the window. And on the x scale, instead of going from 0 to 5, go from 0 to 10. Not 110. That would be too big. Okay, 0 to 10. There, now we've got a nice graph that shows where it's hitting the ground. And we want to find what time that occurs at when it hits the ground. So I'm going to press second and the trace key, which brings up my calc menu. And I want to find a zero of the function. So I'll select number two. And again, it asks me to go left of it. Well, left of that point would probably be around four seconds. Let's do that again. Okay, so we're going to go to the graph. And we're going to go calc. A zero. So we want to go left of it, which I said I would guess would maybe be about two. And I'm then going to pick a right bound, let's say of six. My guess is going to be at four. And here it tells me that my zero occurs at five. This looks like a nice zero because it says at actually y equals zero. Sometimes you get an estimate at that y value. And this time it looks like five is going to be the answer. So let's go back to our problem. The next one, which asks us how many seconds after its launch will it hit the ground? We already know the answer from our graph. But we, what we want to do is determine it and verify it from our equation. So here's our equation. When it hits the ground, the height is zero. So this, this is actually the equation we want to solve. It's got some big numbers in there. In fact, those are kind of unwieldy numbers to work with. So what I'm going to do is divide everything by 16. Make the problem a little bit easier to work with. Now that's actually going to give a different looking function than what I have in red, but it's going to have the same zeros. It's going to have the same x-intercepts, so we can do that. We'll end up having 0 equals negative t squared plus 4t plus 5. And sometimes people also like to multiply everything by negative 1, or in fact we could have divided everything by negative 16 in the previous step, so that our leading term is positive. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have 0 equals t squared minus 4t minus 5. 
And again, this is a totally different function than we've got in red, or even that we have above it. But it will have the same intercepts, the same x-intercepts. Now this actually, this problem can be easily factored, but since we've been practicing the quadratic formula, let's continue doing that on this problem. So if we want to solve for t, we're going to have t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. In our problem, a is 1, b is 4, that's a negative 4, put that in there, and c is negative 5. So we'll have t is equal to negative of a negative 4, which is a plus 4, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. And we need to simplify that, as always. That's going to be 4 plus or minus, this is going to be 16 plus 20, which is root 36. The discriminant is 36, which is a perfect square, which tells us we're going to have two real solutions to this equation. So it ends up being 4 plus or minus 6 divided by 2. We have two solutions for t. One will be t equals 4 plus 6 divided by 2, which is 10 divided by 2, and that's 5. The other solution will be 4 minus 6 divided by 2. And that's negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. t equal negative 1 doesn't make any sense in our problem. Our time is positive. In fact, if we were to go back to our graph, that negative 1 is actually, if we were to continue the parabola back here, where it would cross the x-axis. Again, it doesn't make any sense in, in our problem, so we're not going to use that answer. We cross it out and say that the rocket is going to hit the ground at t equals 5 seconds. <laughs>